NASA has decided that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew-9 next February, uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed. So Boeing Starliner will not return Butch and Sonny home. Butch and Sonny will instead be stuck at the ISS until February 2025 when they will come home with Crew-9. Crew-9 will launch no earlier than September 24th of next month and one suit will be brought up for Butch and Sonny. The other suit has already been checked and cleared aboard the ISS. NASA says that Butch and Sonny support the agency's decision fully. Uh, their families are doing well. Their families understand, uh, just like the crew members when they launch, there's always an opportunity. There's always a possibility that uh, they could be up there much longer than they anticipate. So the families understand that. I'm not saying it's not hard. It is hard. It's difficult. Uh, you have to adjust for that. We have a support structure uh, for the astronauts, and it's there to support the families and the crew members on orbit. So they're doing well. Uh, they understand, and again, we thank them for what they do. So here's just some highlights from the nearly two-hour press conference on Saturday, August 24th. NASA says that there was just too much unpredictability with the thrusters, and when they looked at the data and potential for a failure with a crew on board, it was too much risk. The so Starliner will undock in early September uncrewed, and some modifications need to be made to the vehicle. And one of those includes modifying for a separation sequence to get away from the space station quicker than planned, which is really interesting and kind of concerning. But Bill Nelson makes it clear Starliner's days may not be over. They still are hoping that it can be a second option aside from Crew Dragon and something that hopefully in the future crew will be able to fly on. Boeing has worked very hard with NASA to get the necessary data to make this decision. <clears throat> We want to further understand the root causes and understand the design improvements so that the Boeing Starliner will serve as an important part of our assured crew access to the ISS. Bill Nelson even said that he has no doubt that humans will fly again on Starliner. I have just talked to the new Boeing CEO, Kelly Ortberg. I told him, uh, how well Boeing uh, worked with our team to come to this decision. And uh, he expressed to me uh, an intention that uh, they will continue to work the problems once Starliner is back safely and uh, that we will have our redundancy and our crewed access to the space station. But NASA's Steve Stitch says it's been a long summer. They will have another flight readiness review to give us updates, including who is going to have to stay grounded on the Crew-9 mission. Also, they're already doing work right now. They will need to reconfigure the Crew-8 Dragon for a six-person return contingency plan. This will take place over the next few weeks. And Crew-9 will launch no earlier than September 24th. Those assignments are not yet finalized, but will be announced soon. Apparently, they were pretty confident that Starliner would be able to take the astronauts home until they did some extensive testing at White Sands, which gave them a surprise. They did five simulations of a thruster on a downhill deorbit sequence, and that's where they saw swelling of that Teflon seal or poppet. This caused that degradation in thrust or issues with the five thrusters that we already know about. So the opinions were split amongst NASA and Boeing for and against the decision to use Starliner or not. Polling was apparently unanimous among NASA folks to not use Starliner. But Boeing was willing to bring home crew. They believed in their vehicle, but NASA thought it was way too risky. I wonder if it were just up to Boeing and Butch and Sonny, if they would have assumed the risk and tried to come home on Starliner. All the work we've done is really important also for bringing this vehicle back. We want the vehicle to come back uncrewed. It needs to land at the White Sands uh, Space Harbor, which is where the opportunities are setting up in September. And all the work that we've done both on the NASA and Boeing side, give us confidence to bring the vehicle back. It has to execute a deorbit burn. It has to do all the things we need it to do, undocking from the space station safely. So I think together we have worked toward that, that part. There's just a little disagreement in terms of the level of risk. And that's kind of where it got down to. And 
I would say, you know, it, it's close. It's very close and it just depends on, you know, how you evaluate the risk. We did it a little differently with our crew than Boeing. One of the reporters asked, what is the mood in the room today? Well, look at their faces. They said all of us wanted to complete this test flight with crew. Unanimously, they're disappointed to not be able to do that. Steve Stitch said a version of, I can't express in words what it's like to commit to a mission and make a fairly dramatic change, which we haven't done in a long time, so there's a feeling of loss. So something that is maybe a silver lining about this, Nelson says they're trying to change culture that led to the loss of Challenger in Columbia where obvious mistakes were not brought forth. So this time around, they seem to have learned from those lessons and people within Boeing and NASA feel comfortable enough to express dissent. So here's the way I see it. The best case for Starliner is if it has a safe, uncrewed return, and then they'll have extensive testing, rework, and recertification that'll probably take over a year. They might have a successful cargo mission in 2026. So it's it's the plan that they fly cargo missions to station through the rest of station. And in fact, that's the scope of the contract that we have with them to provide cargo capabilities. There is no existing contract with the agency for crude capability, which doesn't mean that that's not a possibility somewhere in the future. In fact, Sierra has their own goals about moving in that direction in the future. But keep in mind, that would not even be that many missions before the ISS is terminated sometime around 2030. So if you want to see the entire discussion, you can go to my live stream tab and replay the discussion. But essentially, these are the highlights. Butch and Sonny will be on the ISS until February of next year, and they will be coming home on Crew Dragon. This is obviously very heartbreaking for Boeing and NASA and not a good look for Boeing. So it'll be interesting to see what actually happens moving forward with the Starliner program. I will continue to cover this story, including the undocking, which should happen sometime early next month. And thank you so much for watching my channel and supporting my work. I really am just so truly humbled to see all the fans from around the world that tune in to Ellie in space. I don't know how I got here, but I really appreciate all of the love and support for my channel. And at the end of the day, can't we just be happy that Butch and Sunny are safe and will have a safe, reliable option to come back to Earth? If you guys enjoyed this video and all of my Starship coverage, please subscribe to Ellie in Space. It's completely free, and that way you won't miss any future videos. If you want to take it a step further, please consider signing up for my Patreon. YouTube revenue can be very unpredictable and hit or miss, and you guys on my Patreon are why I'm able to take these trips and help me experience the life that I'm very thankful to live down here at Starbase and many of the other places that I've gone to report for the channel and the places that I'll be going in the future.